Infinite Imaginarium proudly presents Gateways to Other Dimensions with Carolina Arivela. Welcome to the Infinite Imaginarium. We have an exciting show for you guys today, and it's called Gateways to Other Dimensions. And we have a special guest on, Carolina. She's a visionary and Peruvian artist based out of Brooklyn, New York. And we're going to do the Infinite Imaginarium roll call. Hi, this is Missy Number 69. I'm with the Imaginarium for a melding of the mind. Hi, guys. Hi, I'm Cartman One, or Nikki. I'm an artist on Minds and uh, one of the core members of Infinite Imaginarium. So, hi. So, Carolina, you're our special guest today, and it's really good to talk to you. I've been um, really liking your art from afar. And I guess, just for people that don't know you, can you uh, briefly introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Thanks for what you said, Satori. I feel, I feel the same way, so likewise. Uh, my name is Carolina Arevalo. I'm from Peru. I live in Brooklyn, and I'm an artist. I do what would be called visionary art. And yeah, I've been living here for three, almost four years, just exploring where my artwork is going and seeing where it takes me from now. Yeah, you just had a, a recent uh, show. Actually, it's still on display, right, for the month. How's that going? It's good. The opening was last Thursday. The show is called Gateways. And I've been pretty excited to show it. I feel it's much more different art or it's somehow different visually from what I've been doing in the past years, at least from my point of view. And yeah, what I've been showing there is five watercolors. They are 30 by 30. All my artwork is usually mandalic looking. I use lots of dots, lots of ice. Whenever someone asks me what type of technique I do, I, I say it's pointillism. And this show actually was talking from a very uh, hearted point for me. It's Gateways, as the title suggests, that it's talking about all the different scenarios or special moments in the ones I feel I've been connected to either just a... Uh, Let's see, give me a second here. <laughs> Sorry, Satori, I think it would be easier for me to start telling you guys a bit of what I work on in general basis, and yeah. then I can start talking to you about the show. I think that would make a little bit more sense to me. All this dots and eyes that I've been telling you about, for me, I don't even know where they started coming from. When I was in art school, I started doing all this little sketches with dots, with eyes, mandalic looking, lots of circles. And I really didn't know what they were talking to me about. They were just kind of, I was kind of just downloading them. And uh, it was actually after reading a piece by Carl Jung, he also did some artwork, which is pretty interesting. I don't know if you guys ever seen it, but he he was talking about he had the same experience. He started doing all this mandalic and circular looking drawings, not really knowing where they were coming from. And you know, when you're in art school, people usually need a lot of concept and in order to validate your work. So that uh, text by Young actually helped me a lot in order to be able to stop keeping these drawings as secrecy wow. in my sketchbooks. And after that is, uh, I think it, took me either one or two years in order to start realizing what the work, the work was talking to me about, which was pretty much a meditation. It was pretty much a, I don't know, jumping in the pool of getting to know myself a little bit more. And somehow it started connecting me more to myself and also planet Earth. And yeah, that's where it started. And that's what my work usually talks about, about the connections in between our inner and outer worlds. And also, I think somehow it's very related to all my family is from the jungles in Peru. And I think we share the concept of how 
we are all one and we are all connected and we are just all divided in billions of organisms in order to make the whole life experience work for all of us living creatures all around and I think somehow that's what my work is talking to me about and it's I don't know it's the way that I'm learning more of where I am and what's happening <laughs> can I tell you that's what your work is telling people too for sure I see that connection between the whole cosmos and the it's like as above so below sort of it's very interesting that you brought up Carl Jung I had no idea by the way thank you for telling me that I'm a huge fan of you and I can't even believe that you said that like that's fascinating to me if I was in art school as an artist and my father was so I can kind of understand what you're saying about the whole like seeking validation when you're going through that process I know that that he was very much as well kind of like finding his style or his thing and Uh, admired all these different artists, surrealists like Dali, etc. But he was really, you know, like what is his thing? It's really interesting to me that these mandalas, you explain that they, in a way they kind of call to you, which is really interesting. And I think that's fascinating, really. Your work is beautiful. Yeah, same thing. It kind of comes through. For me, I would phrase it, you know, inner paths to outer truths. And I like the fractal uh, nature of your art. And so it, it seems to me like what you were kind of saying is kind of what I got from it. Like the more you go into yourself, the more it's like a reflection of the whole outer universe. And it's like this, this dance. Because uh, I know for my own, I, I don't do like the same art that you do, but in my own like writing or my own introspective stuff, the more I go within myself is the more I see the connections in my outer perspective of things and the wider my my perspective gets and the deeper my perspective gets of inner right so. i think it's very fascinating how each of and anyone of, and every one of us we all have a different way in the one we start connecting to this major thing that's going on and that we are part of um just what you said satori the fact that i make dots and i do eyes that doesn't mean that's the way for everyone out there Um, you do other stuff, you do your poems and different artwork and it's for me it's fascinating just just like in, I don't know, in a novel um, everything that connected. kind of patience is, is I don't know the kind of hours it takes me for a piece <laughs> but they, I had no idea they were so big when I saw you standing next to them in one of your photos I was very surprised at how large they were and your amount of, of patience really I mean I was going to ask you, do you know the artist that also is fascinated by dots that pulls into a very psychedelic kind of like meditative zone and she deals with her own mental illness this way? She's referred to as the high priestess of dots. You know who I'm talking about? You're talking This about Johnny? Kasama, the queen of dots from planet Earth. Yeah, Yui Kasama, Kasama, right? Kusama? Yeah, yeah, Yui Kusama, she actually, I didn't know her work until I was, until this episode that I just told you guys, um, taking really? my, my sister introduced wow. me a time after I started doing these, so I felt very related, and she, she always refers to her artwork to kind of related to the universe, how everything is made from little dots as she finds herself in this uh, star-looking surrounded space when she works. Yeah, that's It's what I was going to ask you is I think she has to, to heal herself in a way. Like, I can relate to her uh, just going into this. She only leaves her hospital where she lives for 40 years to paint, but she sometimes doesn't sleep and she just paints and she just does these dots and it's unreal. And I... Yeah. Imagine that, like her, you go into this place where you probably become so connected and meditative or some sort of like... I mean, it must be an amazing experience because it's really amazing work. It really is detailed and it shows how much time you must have put for each piece. Karina, do you have like a, something that triggers you to create, you know, when you want to create a new piece, a new piece of artwork? So two things here. The first... The first of them is, I think the reason why I keep on doing artwork or one of the major ones is because I don't know where each drawing is going. I'm never planning artwork. It just starts 
unraveling itself. It goes from one orbit to the other, and it's just like a ripples in the ocean, one thing leads to the other, and that's great for me because I don't have to put any pressure. I don't know where I'm going because I actually don't know, and control is not with me, so that's pretty, pretty good. And the other reason why I keep on doing it is because this, this for me is my major meditative space. It's a space where I feel more clear, more tranquil, and also calmer in order to make sense of my own feelings and daily life, or just the major uh, reason why we're here. So that is exactly what I was wondering: was do you do it as a form of like self art therapy because it feels like very therapeutic to look at and healing because it represents, like you say, almost like a bigger whole of the cosmos, but inside. I feel like it's very as above, so below, which I said before. And I think when you go into that meditative space, it's almost like you create for yourself. Am I right? In a way, you are. In actually, in 2014, I made a project. They were nine drawings. The project is called Visions of a Healing Journey, and this was as soon as I moved to New York out of you know my comfort zone in Peru with friends and family. I moved to this new country not knowing uh, pretty much a lot of people and I just submerged into my own consciousness and while working on this drawing I felt I was healing my most deep wounds the ones that I didn't even know I had from when I was a child or fears that I would carry with me in daily life and this actually kind of helped me go out of a sort of depression that I didn't even know I was going through so yes Yeah, that was a very special project and a great point in in time. And actually, after doing that, I I feel all of my work keeps on healing me. But it's also teaching me that now there are so many things that I can also do, including right now I'm working on a project in the one uh, every time someone wants a commission piece. I don't want to think about myself when working anymore. I want to think about the other person. So. If this person is in New York, I invite them over to my studio, and we have a talk about what they're going through. And I want to download something for them from their own personal journey through Earth, and not my own. And I think this is a very—it's very exciting times to start this new part of the art phase. Do you find that you know when you create a new piece that it conjures up? Something new within you that needs healing or something. Because when I find that when I do art, it often conjures up something new that I was not even aware of. Something that needs addressing or something that needs healing. You know, within my essence of my personality. Do you find that when you create art, that it brings something new about yourself that you've not acknowledged until that point? Yeah, for sure.、Um, one of the main reasons why, when I was renting an art studio, I used to get studios for myself instead of sharing, was because of the big experiences that I would go through when working. I I cry a lot when I feel deeply, not necessary of sadness, but also of happiness. And I think this might not be the best scenario for other、uh, artists. So、uh, for me, working is a very personal time because of all the healing that I go through. And, wow! Yeah,、That's、for、so、me, beautiful. Only about sad things that happen, but also healing for me relates to feeling more connected to earth and nature. And sometimes when doing artwork, the type of healing that I'm going through is. I don't know. Like this time, I was working on a painting called "The World of Plants," and I was. Looking at lots of illustrations and documentaries about plants, or I recently also did that with corals. So this healing process that I'm going through is connecting more to my other, what I consider to be brothers and sisters, which are like other animals or species out in Earth. So I think that for me is also a healing、uh, scenario, just connecting and you know, getting this happy, awesome-hearted、uh, energy. That's really beautiful. I al- you almost made me cry because, like, for me, I've done art with kids for a long time, and I've always taught them that part of the process is ripping it up when you're done and putting it back together in another pretty way. Because it's not always about making it look like something perfect; it's about the process you're going through. 
and a form of release because I had to deal with PTSD myself. So mm-hmm. that healing that you're talking about, I can relate. And I think that's beautiful that you did that for yourself in New York. I, can I ask you a specific question? Did you say after that attempt then, what, did you see how powerful your work was after that? Did you show yourself how powerful your work was? Were you just like, oh my God, <laughs> my pain is <laughs> expressing itself in massive, you know, like paintings. Like this is amazing. Those guys, I feel they're like, they're their own thing. And it's funny, you know, they, I don't even know how they happen, when they happen. But after a time, I just want to share them with people because I want them to be out there. I feel they, they are teaching me a lot of things. Um, when I'm working, I usually don't know what, what I'm doing and, or even what it's teaching me. So it's funny. Maybe I will see a painting or a drawing two, three, four years later and realize why I did what I did. So, yes. Yeah. That actually kind of reminds me of this video that recently was going around with Jim Carrey and he says that he needs uh, color and Mm -hmm. in it he talks about he really doesn't know what a painting really means like sometimes he has an idea but it's not until like years later that he realizes the painting was telling him what he needed to know like a year ago or like what what was going on in his inner world like he couldn't necessarily see it yet but like he knew that's what he, he needed to like tell himself or hear about whatever was going on with his inner world and, and even so like how it matches up to the outer world right. um, and it's, it's similarly but different for me like when when I get into different zones of writing and I was actually talking to a friend earlier I said like when it's really good like you view yourself in third person and like you, you're just in the flow but it's hard to stay in that balance he's like but then like later when I need to like share it with somebody and someone's like oh that's so great I was like you know, it's kind of funny. I feel weird because really the experience, I feel like my phrase is, I feel like I just depend. Like I'm just a pen. Like I'm like, like it's not consciously coming for me. And those are the, the, the special uh, cosmic giggles, magical moments that these, these things that uh, more broadly, what we try to do in the imaginary of capture these moments, like I like to plan stuff, but then let, like, like I, like I told you earlier, like, Oh, we do this, uh, like I did the show notes, but like usually I just rip it up and like don't even use it later and we just go with the flow. But yeah, so that's what like what we try to do too here in Imaginarium is just try to get into those moments. I think right now this, there's this Alan Watts lecture that talks to, that resembles a lot to what we're saying right now whenever he says like the, the plant is planting and the flower is flowering, flowering and they are just doing their thing. They're not thinking, they're just it's not like the plant says, oh, now I need to grow a stem and now a leaf. It just goes through the process. And I think what we are saying whenever we are doing our specific type of artwork, when we feel that way, I feel things are more legit at some point and we, it doesn't leave or doesn't give any space for us to doubt or double think if we should or we shouldn't. And I think that's the most uh, genuine and fun way in order to create just see see where it takes you and there are lots of things that we are downloading and we don't even know it's just whenever like whenever we meet people or we go to the ocean we don't know why we like doing those things but there's something changing inside ourselves which is very valuable and it's pretty interesting how everything works kind of the same way yeah and I think that really like comes out in your art when I was talking about like the fractal nature of it because like I noticed that too in my own different experiences of let's say communing with with nature or the world or or with with the environment is it's the same thing with Alan Watts is talking like you clear your mind and you're not thinking about anything else you're just feeling the breeze you're just like kind of moving with with the plants and you're just there in the moment and those moments and I think this is kind of goes back to this kind of like whole like healing process because then when you get out of those moments there's like this this noise that happens and like in my own process it's like oh I need to go and like uh pro- like I, I told people like even before I even shared any of any of my writing to anybody it's like I just did it for myself I did it, that's how I process the world because like sometimes sometimes the world gets on top of me sometimes you know life family work whatever gets on top of me 
and I just kind of need to like process that stuff so I could be in those legit moments. So I could be in that flow state so I could feel uh, more, uh, I, don't, I don't even know what the right word is, but I guess right now I'll just say more genuine or whatever. <laughs> I hear you. Sometimes I, I think we all feel that way. And some, some people write, some people draw, some people garden and thousands of different possibilities of things. I was thinking lately of how important and how, how different our world daily would be if instead of joining with friends uh, to have a drink in a bar, we would all just sit down and do each of us what we connect to. But it's, I don't know, maybe we are a little bit all too shy in order to start doing that, but it's it's great how we are uh, shifting that way and how, uh, you know, like the majority of people, we are all shifting into getting into a genuine part of ourselves. We are, I think we're pretty much as a society getting fed up of faking and not talking about our feelings and our heart. And yes, I don't know. that's right. You know, when you were saying that, it kind of made me think of, you know, there's a dark side to social media, but maybe the lighter side of social media is that this is some kind of scaffolding of us. Because, you know, when when social media resonates with me, I find someone expressing whatever they do is, you know, that's their expression, whatever, whatever form it comes in. And then I was like, oh, that's cool. And it could be, you know, something uh, I won't even want to put like um, a value on it, but when it's a true expression, it resonates with me. And, you know, I've, I've been working um, in the cooking industry. So when I see someone like my grandma, when she cooks, like that's how she expresses her true nature. And you could tell because she, her secret ingredient is she put love, love in it. And it's beautiful just to sit there and watch her do it. And, and there's a million other different examples of that. And it's interesting that maybe I, I personally think we're, we're progressing towards this way, and maybe this is some weird process, you know, collectively that we're doing. And hopefully, this is kind of our hidden heart, secret desire with Imaginarium <laughs> is that we talked with Bill about this that we want to have this Imaginarium bus, and that we kind of throw these spontaneous creative events, and we kind of like coax people and to doing creative stuff and like expressing themselves. I always, cause I always loved uh, reading Mark Twain. And so I always say that it's Tom Sawyer people. Like I used to do this when I do catering in like the Hollywood Hills. Like I would like spend time uh, plating my food and people would just gather around and watch. And then they, they asked me if they could do it. And I'm like, yeah, sure. And I'll teach them how to do it. And then by the end of the, the party, like I'm drinking a beer while the rest of the party is like plating food. And they, they had to ask me permission to do it. And I was just like, oh, they just want to like do something fun and like creative and play. Yeah, uh, Missy kind of go. goes with this. <laughs> like when we were kids, you know, like we had none of these compulsions of like trying to be proper or whatever. It's like you're always looking for that kid. Oh, can we go play? Can we can we just like go and like color or, or move around? They just want to <laughs> have fun. That song, Girls Just Want to Have Fun. I liked it as a kid, but I think everyone just wants to have fun. It's not just girls. Everyone, yeah. deep down inside. And, but when you come, when you get an adult, like a majority of the adults, you kind of have to like little trick them or coax them into doing it. Just, just oh, you definitely, all of it. Yeah. you definitely, you definitely have to trick them. And I was going to say to Carolina too. I wanted to say that your work is very, it's so massive and infinite. On now, actually knowing how large it is, some of it, it's really even more overwhelming. But I think I've always been like this about images of space or the cosmos. Like as a child, I was always attracted to them. In fact, right now I'm wearing galaxy pants, which is really funny. But um, what I'm trying to say is with all the pixelation and this giant mass of infinite scale, even images of space as a child would freak me out because they would make me feel so insignificant and tiny. Mm -hmm. And it would trigger this, this paranoid anxiety, which was so weird. As a kid, I just felt so tiny and I couldn't relate as an organism yet. Then as I, I got older, I was able to create the, the kind of awareness of the fractal kind of grid around us. I mean, it's everywhere if you can tap into it. And I think that's great that you're studying these fractals and, and bringing that out in your work. But what is interesting to me is I would naturally be drawn to your work, to the space 
cosmoe effect of the beautiful intergalactic symmetry is like amazing. But yet my favorite work I think so far I've seen of yours, and this is interesting, are the gold leaf works. And it's even interesting to me as to why I think I, I'm able to see in those the connection that you've made, I think, to the fractals even more so in the detail of it somehow it, it drew me in in a way where i think i could understand a lot more but the gold leaf work i wanted to ask you about too and i'm sure satori does i looked at it and it was really it was amazing all right so first of all i think what you were saying about being little and feeling tiny and realizing how big everything is actually for me relates a lot to we all just want to have fun it's i think we all go through that process of feeling tiny and realizing we're just one little thing in this whole crazy universe thing that's happening with us but whenever we realize we're just this tiny thing i think we could always look at it as saying oh so i just do my work um i put all the energy that i can and then the rest of the organisms will do the same because energy and love and fun is contagious and if we start doing more of that like we can get everyone to start dancing and join us in that awesome bus that you guys are talking about and i think we are already kind of in that bus we it's great we live in an era in the one we have internet and social media which is kind of another collective consciousness that we have inside our computers and technology uh, hardware. Uh, a real social, now we have a real social media platform though. That's the big difference for the artists in support of the artists. That's great. Yeah, I'm, I'm stoked that we have that. I'm stoked that we can start just sharing all the energy and positive, positivity and also, you know, just get everyone into this dance that we're talking about. And then going to the Gold Leaf series. And Missy, you've been talking about how much you appreciate the size of my work. Thank you. For the longest time, I was only working in three by two inches sized paper. Um, in Peru, we have that size matchboxes. So matchboxes are actually a little box that comes with another I box. I love it. <laughs> um, so what I did, I started doing drawing inside the matchboxes and I couldn't stop doing them. I The first series that I made was around 100, the second one was 600, and the third one that is the one you guys have seen with gold leaves is the third one that I did and that was when I moved to New York, but the first two were only black ink with the tiniest a rapidograph, which is a type of technical pen that I use, and some typewriting, uh, maybe two or three different words on each little drawing. And moving here, I, I think it's been very interesting how I started only doing black and white with words, and then I started incorporating gold leaf, and after that, a little bit of watercolor, very desaturated watercolor to my work. And now I'm doing very saturated it art. Feel, it, it feels very elemental to me. Like, it's really interesting. I like it. I think most of my life I've been pretty shy. And I still am for sure. Not as much as I used to. But I've always wanted to just, you know, approach the outside world one step at a time. And I feel uh, this might be the reason why in my artwork I started doing first just black ink and then a little gold leaf and then a little color and very tiny sizes and then going a little bit more bigger. I I think I really like, like, I'm kind of like a cat, just one thing at a time, you know, get to know where you are, realize how things work and then start moving around. Um, so yes, the gold leaf era was a, was a very great era for me doing, uh, I don't know, 10 by 8 inches artwork seemed major and huge and something I would never be able to finish. And with time, it's just been growing. Um, I don't know how, how much it will grow, though. I, I wish I could just do this humongous artwork and never finish it and get like immersed in the tiniest details. I think also starting from things so little and then going too big has made me keep my 
meticulosity for detail and even though I'm now I'm yes you started small and you were right you went really huge yes. you yeah. are you know talking about how art the whole thing about, about art getting bigger because when I started my art journey I was always really worried about what people were going to think of my art and their views on it and I would say to people when they talk to me about their artistic ideas that you know you just need to come out of the artistic closet yes. and then what happens as a result of that it becomes bigger you, you do one tiny creation and then you are inspired by your own art to do something else and it becomes a bigger creation and then you create more stuff and it, it becomes like this big artistic tree so I was going to ask you, Carolina, you know, what, how do you feel about that in terms of, you know, when you have that fear of like, oh, I want to create this thing, but I don't really know what people are going to think of it. They might think it's crap or not very good. And then if you just sort of bite the bullet and you do it, and then something else is born from that one individual piece of art. Because mm -hmm. that's what I find. It's like if I do it fearlessly, then I, I'm then inspired to do something else and then it kind of grows this big art tree of creation. So do you find that, you know, when you create things that more things evolve from that? Yeah, for sure. I wish we could all be fearless all the time. I know that's not the case. But something that I really appreciate about how I work is that with everything, artwork, life, any any aspect of life, I even though I am scared or nervous or not knowing if this is the right movement or not, I jump to the pool anyway. Even though I'm uh, very scared of showing some artwork, I do it anyway. And I feel that's always been something very positive as the fact that yes, I, it's like following it, your bliss, and if you follow your bliss, you can't you can't really be too attached to the outcome. It's more the experience, right? Yeah, and just or maybe not knowing if the next thing that I'm going to draw is going to I don't know ruin the whole piece or anything. I just go with it, and I think that teaches a lot, and that's very important. I think I wouldn't be doing saturated big artwork right now if it wouldn't be teaching me and giving me like the next steps to keep on going it's like uh i don't know like working out you just start getting the group and then you know you lift up more weight and it's kind of a process wouldn't would you say that it's like following your bliss so that you're never quite actually aware of working you get kind of in a trance and the flow and it becomes where you're not attached to the outcome as much as the process the experience of it yeah for sure yeah terence mckenna has this great quote and it's something like um nature encourages like you feel like you're you're throwing yourself into the abyss only to find out that it's a bed of roses and i think it's like this natural um healthy kind of like uh, anticipation or not fear but like this this little bit of anxiety but every time for me personally and it's not just like with artwork or, or anything it's just with life in general when mm -hmm. I feel like a little anticipation like it before I started like going introspective like that's those are exact moments like oh I should be doing that because I don't feel comfortable doing it because then like later you find out oh it's like why was I even worried about that like why was I even like hesitant about that like that I think that once you get pass those little bit of hurdles and then it's like okay what's next what else can i do like oh let's let's do a little bit more let's do this let's do that <laughs> and it's it's really uh interesting how that, that kind of goes back to this like fractal progression like the little bit turns into even deeper and more you know <laughs> bending out of control i i think that's the thing about the dots and going into that meditative trance like process where what it's the first mark you make it's not the last you know as an artist and it's soothing in a way when it's a repetitive movement where I know I can relate to that and I think just to watch them even as a kid I would go up to the side of this art table and he'd always be like don't bump the desk 
But I'd just be transfixed just watching the paintbrush, you know, and the ink on the table and just watching the ink glide across. The point is I was fascinated as a kid just watching it. And so I imagine that when you start with even just one little dot and you know that you can rely on the fact that it's not the last one and you're going into a process, that state is somewhat so blissful in a way and relieving of like, I'm, I'm really in, inspired. Your work is like amazing. I really want to see it in person. <laughs> Thanks, Missy. I I think the reason why I do all this yeah, dot, totally. three dots is because it's the tiniest thing that I can draw. And from, as, as I say it, it's from dot came dot, from dot came the universe, and from dot came I. I like to do all this neutrino or molecular and, and then came and then came the i i yeah but i i think with all these dots i start doing like molecular looking species that later on will turn into a solar system or oh by the way do you know how i first saw your photo one of your artwork uh your fit one of my favorite pieces of it was the one I tagged Sutorian where it has the eyes and it's animated into the GIF. And I said to Sutori that I had a dream about it. I had a dream about your painting and it was animated before you animated it, I think. It was like a Sutori. Did you ever post it before it was animated? I might have. I'm not sure though, but yeah, I had that painting for maybe a I told. I told him I had a dream of this intergalactic Satori planetary. It was really, really cool. And there was like beehives swarming. It was so cool. It was really neat. And it was actually the first picture of me that I had seen. I remember now. And I tagged Satori in it. And he goes, oh, I really like her work. You know, I've been talking to her about working um, on a collab or having her on. And I said, oh, that's great. I love her. That's funny. I think I've never, ever dreamed with my artwork. Now that I think about it. Oh my God, you're, you're healing a lot of people is the other thing I was going to say. The work that you're doing to heal yourself is healing other people. If, if they can tap into it and see this, this amount of focus and healing that you like enjoyment you get from this is amazing. It's yeah. such a gift. I'm pretty excited to keep on developing this new idea of talking to people before doing a commission piece for them. I've done three of them so far and for some reason I they have turned out to be my favorite pieces. I'm gonna send you uh, guys some of them to see. Yeah. I'd like to show you some of my stuff too because I do a lot of weird abstract fractal stuff or detailed like nature stuff. And it's very interesting but I just sent you one in. Yeah I'm example. seeing that. What are you using yeah. for those? You know, that was a happy accident, and it's funny that you say that, because that's my phone. Oh, wow. And that ser that series, I really want to show you, because I've been wanting to show it to an artist that I've been reading. I love this. I love the blue and, and green image that you sent. I love how, in this artwork, you go from very tiny little... I don't even know what these guys are. It's really, it's really, it's <laughs> one of a lot, a lot of pictures that I really want to show you about 10 to 15 maybe. And I would love for you to just see them. And I would love I've been waiting because I want to do them on a very large, large scale, but in a different medium. So it would be interesting to see this done in the, in, from another perspective. And, and also do my own version of it. The version I want to do is on a very large resin. But think countertop scale, like thick resin with like layers of layers, which is going to take time. <laughs> so, but yeah, I would love to show that to you. Send them my way. I would love seeing them. Cool. Thank you. But yeah, I find it interesting what you're saying about your, your new uh, commission art. I think that kind of comes into this whole like fractal thing about you going really small, right? In detail, then building up and then kind of like working throughout your own inner space. And then now you're that one cell that needs to kind of like group with another cell. <laughs> and then like your osmosis of, of these other people doing this commission work. And it's kind of like your inner things growing out as far as your outer expression of it. That's what just came to my mind when you're talking about that. Yeah, it's, it's quite important for me. I feel, I don't know, as a kid, I didn't, 
feel I had a secure place in the one to kind of expand my consciousness. And I'm pretty sure this wasn't because of my parents or friends not being there. I think it was more of me being fearful inside my own mind and just realizing how we can all, even the more disconnected person that we can find or meet, I feel we all have the eager in order to connect to our higher self and to nature and to our consciousness and to others around us. And if I'm able to just talk to someone and give the space that I think I've needed years, that's what I want to do. For me, doing artwork, I feel uh, it's not about me as much as it used to be. I think the more of the healing process that I went through is coming to an end. Uh, I know we're always like healing and getting hurt and all of these things, but I feel now my necessity goes to connect with others and I feel collaboration is the best way in order to start building temples. And I think that's what what my work is trying to focus on right now, not only with the commission pieces, but also, I don't know, I would love to my voice to be used in order to connect someone or let's put it this way I feel our culture is going through a major consciousness crisis nowadays and I know my artwork won't solve that consciousness crisis we're going through but at least it might make someone curious about nature or about their own personal journey and that's my major goal nowadays collaborating with others and seeing what we can do because I don't know, I don't really appreciate the negative negativity towards saying that we already ruined planet Earth and we should just keep on messing with it. I feel we are in the... That's break. so nihilistic, right? I hate that. It's stupid. So yeah, just focusing, yeah. contagion more of this. We can I think you're so, that's so empowering of you to empower other people that way and to say that you went through this as a process of being and like, thank you for sharing that. You know, you know, going back to, to what you're saying, it's something similar to that that I constantly uh, propels me to do whatever this is that I'm doing. But, um, you know, there's always these different things that I latch on to. And, and one of them is that people kind of say in this, uh, oh, that's utopian when you kind of like have this kind of uh, positive perspective. And it's just like, the world has plenty of critics like it's crowded trade as they say but rather what the world needs is more visions and more different types of visions and i think what we're all dancing around is is that it's not necessarily let's say certain content but it's the process of that creation the process of of seeing how your inner world connects to the outer world and when people like like your artwork may may spark that in within them, and they may not necessarily realize it until later, and just kind of like you know what you were saying when you look back on some of your work and, and when it still tells you something. What's weird is I think yeah. she mentioned something like this, and that the series I want to show her came from a really not a very good place. And reflecting on it, I looked at it and was like, "Well, that's a fractal." beautiful thing it was like a moment where i connected this weird like life experience out but um once you do connect that feeling of those fractals and and being the larger thing it's an awareness that's amazing i think this is where entheogens take a very important place for all of us talking about psychedelics, talking about meditation or yoga or any practice that anyone has. I think these entheogens, all these supplies and tools that we have around us and within us are quite important in order to open dialogue and open ourselves to, to just what we're talking about, to our truer selves and to this part that is willing to do more instead of just negating and it's difficult sometimes just trying to express that to other other people, but I think that's why we have psychedelics and that's why we have meditation and that's why we have. Yay! Uh, you know, you know, Satori's been talking. About, you know, yeah. Satori. You know, Satori's talk about the psychedelic bed and breakfast, right? For the Imaginarians. <laughs> 
Yeah. Going? I'm just curious because I wanted to say that my sister is named, her name's Carolina. <laughs> Oh, cool. But she lives in Uruguay. Is that in Uruguay? They, my mom is from South America and stuff. And I was going to say, over where they live, there's a lot of people doing these um, experiences, like um, therapy. I want to bring that element out more. I think it would be really a great experience. And like you said, therapeutic. Not really therapy. You didn't say that. But it, it needs to be, I think, more integrated and respected for what it is the practice well, actually is, you know? I think yeah. for, for myself, when we're talking about psychedelics and, and exactly what you were saying and these tools that we have, is prior to me having different experiences with, with mushrooms, like I knew the intellectual concept of Gaia, of the world being a living, breathing entity. And I was more into like philosophy and this kind of like headspace. But it was a whole other thing to actually have the felt experience of being a cell within the world and being a part of everything and like literally sitting on the beach and feeling and being one with the heartbeat of the earth as a felt experience and that's something that we could point to in our art but it's a whole other thing to kind of give that gift of that experience because i think that's that's something i know from my own personal experience that propels me to do different things and to to keep on latching on to when I when I see someone expressing their, their true self and, and being able to recognize that and being able to in whatever sh- small way of, of giving them encouragement or whatever it is and I think one of the best experiences that I personally have is when I ever do something and it starts a ripple effect someone else I said oh that that inspired me to do this or do that and then you see these kind of fractal uh, expressions of, of this um, inner essence that we, ha- we have and, the, and how this connects to everything and you know as we talk about this hopefully you know people get encouraged to use these tools and, and I think too part of the reason is that the way things are right now it's really hard let's say here in the states to have lack of a better word a sacred sp- space to be able to do that like I necessarily didn't have have that idea, that little a uh, gun hole style of doing it. It was part of the reason why I, think I, I it's kind like of totally legal where my mom is. I'm telling you, yeah. it's really funny but, though. It's like she's right on the border of Brazil. I think I'm not. I'm not exactly but, sure. But just, I have to look into it. Just me personally, like the way I am, it's kind of like that's why my psychedelic bed and breakfast. That's my Imaginarium, and it kind of be. It goes without saying that it's a psychedelic bed and breakfast. <laughs> But I'm not going to necessarily advertise it like that. <laughs> but uh, it's, I think, just as you were saying about your own personal art space, of having that that space where you're able to do that, it's vastly important for that. And I think even, too, to have these small little spaces that we carve out, that's kind of necessarily what I try to do with Imaginarium and even with Satori D on Minds. So, like, I always kind of say this, like, my channel is Switzerland. Like all the other crap from everything else does not come to my shore. I make it a very cognitive importance to keep it that way. <laughs> but going back to to that is vastly imp- important to me, and I think you know that the the psychedelics are a very important tool. But also too, I like something Alan Watts says: like once you get the, the message, um, it's time to hang up the phone. And the harder part is this integration process. And I think that integration process, it seems to me that you were processing this through your art. And you got that message and then it was like, okay, now I need to process this. I'm still going through my own process. And I think we always go through the process, but um, it's, it's really amazing to like, how you could see that without necessarily like, knowing it for a fact but yeah yeah i i really appreciate psychedelics i feel they're a great tool but for me i think it's also quite important what you were saying satori how you were into philosophy and all this different i don't know more theoretical part of the real i think that's also very important and it relates to the integration part i I've been hearing so much about lots of young people going down to Peru and doing ayahuasca and different 
sessions and then, I don't know, just taking two or three days and jumping back to their hectic New York or hectic city life. And the integration process there is not happening. And that's why these young people who don't have all the theory that they need or, I don't know, don't really know how to start integrating the experience they had with their daily life in, instead of seeking for these kind of help because until today, even though it's growing, it's not as common to know that this is part of the experience. Lots of young people keep on going back and having a second or a third or a tenth ayahuasca session. And that's not going to give you the answer because on what we are talking, just you need to hear the message, hang up the phone and then do the work. And I think it's so good that Uh, the California scene, the Boulder scene are growing so much with integration and it's great that we have uh, all these conferences going on like Psychedelic Science or Horizons or, you know, all these different spaces that are opening up. I think that's quite important and for me it's a game changer in the psychedelic world. Yeah, it's definitely really interesting the progress that these different organizations have. MAPS is one of them. Uh, and I've kind of always started now, my, my phrase that I like to say is that if uh, it's kind of going on uh, John F. Kennedy and he said, if more politicians knew poetry and more poets knew politics, the world would be a lot better place. But then I expanded out to, if more programmers knew poetry and more poets knew programming and more scientists knew poetry, and more poets in science, I think the world will be a lot of better place. And I use poetry as this broad sense of getting in tune with that kind of um, intuitive knowledge, but it needs to be coupled with that theoretical, that mathematical and, and, and science knowledge. They're not mutually exclusive, they're complementary to each other. And I think what I see is a lot of people get in this weird kind of myth that it has to be one or the other. And that we, our, our programmers are, are losing sight of that kind of poetry. And our poets sometimes lose some of that sense of the great wonder that is the biology of life. That, that, that math is this poetry of physics. And that I think when you're able to start doing that integration process, you don't see, as Missy likes to say, there are no divides. That everything, my favorite metaphor of that is Indra's net. And it's like these net of jewels that connects everything out throughout the whole cosmos, the inner and the outer. And um, so we're getting past, I think, our hour. So we could wrap it up with our final thoughts. And uh, anybody want to say their final things of anything they want to express? It was great to hear more about your work, and I really feel inspired, as I said, and super connected to it as a whole. I think it's a great concept for people to embrace and to be empowered by. And um, it was great talking to you today. Thank you. Thanks, Missy. It's been great talking to all the three of you guys. I think the work that you are all doing is amazing as well. And I think that having these types of conversations just give me so all this energy and they fuel me up in order to know that we have so much work ahead of us and it's exciting and it's going to take us to places we don't even know and what we were just saying you know art is contagious and collaboration is contagious love is contagious and we Yay. need to keep totally. on doing things that uh inspire us for me lately it's been yeah for sure doing lots of artwork as i usually do but Taking care of plants is also one of the things that keeps me going and wants me to wake up and, I don't know, like, groom them and, you know, play with my cat, different things. Just, I think we should all keep on doing all these things that inspire us in order to be able to inspire others and then realize that actually we have all the tools that we need in order to change this world. I'm pretty sure all of us want to wake up and connect to our higher self, so... Yeah, there's lots of work to do, but it's exciting work. Yes, let's all get um, infected with art and love, uh, the contagion. But uh, thanks for being on, and we'll definitely 
keep on being in touch and progress with, with see what unfolds. Thank you. <laughs>